works through them at least on a monthly basis now but we will do them only when i have a chance to invite amazing guests so they do talking not me and today uh, i'm happy to welcome thomas uh, from clickbank and because it's clickbank we'll be talking about affiliates but all kinds of affiliates how to attract affiliates what you do with affiliates and uh, honestly i had an amazing experience uh, joining thomas on clickbank uh, podcast it was nice insightful and i learned a couple of things about how to actually host people <laughs> i'll try to do the same a great job but uh, without further ado thomas show is yours uh we're talking about uh, i feel as today um i have a lot of questions actually but uh, let's start just i mean uh for the affiliate marketing there's also two things advertisers trying to find best affiliates and affiliates trying to find the best offers to promote with the right. advertisers and then there is a click bank that uh, helps those to it and to do business so uh i've seen uh a lot of i mean on facebook uh, i've seen a lot of ads from clickbank about how you change approach to working with affiliates and impressive and nice and i do like what i see but uh can you please elaborate more on that yeah no happy to dive in it's uh, and thanks for hosting this i'm really happy to join you and retract and the whole community here so I trust we can add value and make everyone's time worthwhile because this is their time not my time so <laughs> excited to dive in and answer any questions that pop up and get into it and yeah you kind of hit on the head uh clickbank exists to connect those two parties we call them the seller the, per the person that owns the offer or the product and the affiliate the person that's driving the traffic to the offer and earning a commission on that um, I won't bore you with clipping details too much unless we want to dive into it. But the long short is that we do all the unfun, unsexy stuff so you can focus on what you're good at, which is usually the marketing, the connections with affiliates and the selling. So we like to do all the stuff like payment processing. We pay the affiliates. We do all the tax remittance. We do all the 1099 contracts to affiliates. We do all the boring stuff that really bogs down an affiliate program and adds a lot of friction to an affiliate program. We remove all that so you can focus on scaling and selling and building a great offer. Or if you're an affiliate, finding a great offer to promote and get paid quickly and keep that revenue coming in. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. So we have two parties here, sellers mm -hmm. and affiliates. So I will pretend that I'm a seller and that's, I mean, sure. it's uh, not uh, um, like uh, all of the blue questions. So uh, we have a list of things people want to know from advertisers. So I'm on Creek Bank. I'm a seller. Now we're taking uh, part of all the boring stuff. But uh, then, do you find all the affiliates for me? Or how do I use all I have to or scale the business with all the affiliates I will find and ClickBank will find for me? Yeah. So I don't, I would honestly start a little further upstream than that, even. I would, I always, when people always ask me, like, oh, like, how do I get affiliates? It's like, well, I push it back on them a bit and ask, is your offer, is your product even ready for affiliates? Because I think a lot of people jump in thinking affiliates are going to be easy to work with. They're just going to promote for free. It's risk-free, all that. And then they kind of fall on their face when they find that their offer isn't poised and converting well to cold traffic, which people might think that affiliates have warm traffic. Affiliates have traffic that knows, likes, and trusts them. They might, but your offer to that audience will be cold. Right? This isn't an e-com campaign where they've hit 14 touch points. Your offer needs to convert to an audience the very first time they see it. And so a good conversion rate might, this might sound low to people, but a good, good conversion rate might be like 2 to 4%. Right, And what they're doing is trying to get a high average order value on that conversion rate to pay the affiliate, to pay Facebook, to pay whatever traffic source that cold traffic is coming from. So if your offer isn't dialed in to begin with, I wouldn't even start with affiliates. I'll just start with testing and optimizing and kind of getting your data and your stats to a level where you can actually play ball in the affiliate space to a high level. And then you can start to approach affiliates and go, hey, we've got the stats. We've got the data. What do you think? Because affiliates are going to want to see that. I think there's a... And feel free to jump in if I'm riffing on this too much, but I feel, I feel like there's a misconception where... People don't really know what affiliates are or what they do. And this is what I spoke at Traffic and Conversion about. It's that affiliates are entrepreneurs too. They're people too. They have the same problems and frustrations you do as a business owner. 
right there, which means that they're distracted, they're busy and they're performance marketers at the end of the day, they have ROI that they need to generate on their activities because they have overhead to cover, whether it's their lifestyle or employees or tracking, so tracking software or whatever it might be. So your offer needs to be up to par where they trust that they're going to get a good ROI, whether they have an email list, whether they have a social post, whether they have cold traffic they're buying. And if that looks all good to them, you have a much better chance of winning traffic from them in the first place and kind of working in that capacity. And then when you come onto a ClickBank, you get exposed to the marketplace that we have. Hundreds of thousands of affiliates scanning our marketplace, looking for offers to promote. So you get put in front of this big marketplace where affiliates might find your offer. And I say might for a key reason there um, because it's a stack ranking on performance. So if your offer doesn't perform, meaning it doesn't convert and affiliates don't get traction on it, you probably won't rake too high in that marketplace. It's kind of like uh, if you're used to like Google search engine, it's kind of like backlinks and Google's algorithm. We kind of look at how many affiliates are getting traction on your offer and getting conversions on your offer. And that helps rank you higher. So the more affiliates you have promoting you, the higher you rank because we're trying to show other affiliates that, hey, this is working for other people. And that's a good indication that this offer is built well and built to scale well. And so if your offer is all dialed in, you can capitalize on that. You can kind of surge up the marketplace rankings, get some good traction. If you don't have good uh, data and good, anal uh, good performance, you might kind of hover and flounder a bit. And that's where the, what are you doing on the personal level with your affiliate offer? Right. So what are you doing to find affiliates outside of any network you're on? What are you doing to manage them? What are you doing? And like at the personal relationship level, and sorry, I'll stop there because I've been riffing a bit, but um, have to go more into that and everything like that. But just that's, wanted to kind of paint the landscape. That's actually amazing because uh, I mean, everybody sees it's just one side. I mean, okay, we have all these offers, we just pick out the best. And then on the other side, okay, we have all those affiliates. Why are they not promoting my offer? And what yeah. you do is actually show, hey guys, you know what? That's a moving, live, constantly changing ecosystem. Something works better. We as a ClickBank, we just push it on the top for other affiliates to see so more affiliates come. And then they may bring, as I assume, other traffic. It will not convert. You get less conversions. You can go down the stream yeah. again. So it's like uh, it's never uh, set in stone. It's always fluid in motion. And uh, well, you mentioned that affiliates are also interpreters. I mean, uh, we work a lot with media buyers. And if there is uh, a more interesting crowd of people to work, they live and die by their KPIs and ROI. Mm -hmm. And they, we help them measure it to tiny fractions because it's like if they don't convert, they just wasted their money on buying the traffic, creating that audience. So now this ROI you mentioned is of primary importance. And uh, you said uh, you told me a really good thing that I never thought of. So let's me get back my cell head again. <laughs> so I uh, I think I did my homework, right? I have uh, my offer. I get some traffic. I may be working with one or two direct affiliates. It's actually working and get conversions. I think I've dialed it in. But do you, as a ClickBank, have some benchmarks that I can actually like confirm independently from somebody? Not because I always believe in that I, I have dialed in. I'm ready to scale. Um, can I have those some sort of benchmarks before I actually jump into that marketplace and see things going in my favor or not? Yeah, when you say benchmarks, you mean like what's a good conversion rate or what's a good payout and things like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you, share, can you share an example? Yeah, yeah, totally. And it does depend on niche and you know what type of product and all that. So there's a lot of variance there. I've done some blogs on that topic too, like what's a good commission to pay and things like that. Um, and what you can do is you can sign up for a ClickBank account. It's free to get into the marketplace. And the marketplace will tell you not a conversion rate because just telling people a general conversion rate is messy, especially when you've got a whole bunch of different types of affiliates promoting an offer. It can be all over the place. So we tell affiliates is average dollar uh, average commission per sale that you can expect to earn. And that's a good nomenclature if you're looking at like, okay, I've got a supplement offer. Um, what is a good commission I should pay? You can go to ClickBank, look at the top offers or the in the health space, for example. And then you can jump through and start to see, okay, um, these are on average paying 120, 150, 80, like whatever dollar amount you think. And you can go, oh, is that, that seems really high maybe. Or, oh, okay, no, I can I can pay that to acquire a customer. 
And that's what everyone needs to think about is what can you pay to acquire a customer? And what are you missing out on if you don't pay enough to acquire a customer? Right, because you're probably missing out on some high level traffic sources like affiliates, like Facebook, like YouTube ads, et cetera. Um, but my, my rule of thumb when I look at an offer is that if you can pay, let's say 120 to $150 to acquire a customer, and if your offer converts to very cold traffic, from a 1.3 to 2% rate, you can scale um, with most traffic sources and that. And obviously this changes if you're doing high ticket webinar funnels, you know, $2,000 price points, all that changes. Um, what that backs into for the seller, if you're looking at like a $150 payout or higher is probably an AOV in the 200 to $300 range. AOVs, that's been the biggest trend we've seen change in the last two to three years is that average order values have needed to climb pretty drastically in order to keep up with rising ad costs, competitive affiliate programs, things like that. So the cost to acquire a customer has gone up and average order value has been the metric, the lever to pull to keep matching that higher customer acquisition cost. And people always ask, it's like, gosh, well, if I'm paying affiliates 75% of my commission and my cogs, right, to fulfill and ship and manufacture the product are X percent, where's the money left for me? The money's left in the lifetime value of that customer. Yeah. So if you did, repeated yeah. sales. Yes. Repeated sales, being an affiliate yourself to that customer. If you don't have other products to sell, recurring billing, you know, cross selling other products you have, everything like that. Um, that's where the big brands are making up and they can, they might even go negative to acquire a customer, you know, for three to six months and then they're going to be pop profitable way past that. So he who acquire, he, he who can spend the most to acquire the customer wins. And that's true with affiliate marketing too. I mean, we know it well being a SaaS company, uh, but it's always uh, interesting to see that actually the situation is the same for like one-time sales because it's not a one-time sale. You're just acquiring the customer. Then you're constantly keeping uh, inventing, let's say, the ways of finding angles to sell more to that customer because it's now becoming a warm customer, not a cold lead coming from somewhere. Cool. Uh, great. So back to my head. So. I have a uh, offer uh, dialed in, joined uh, the system. I get some uh, traffic from the affiliates. Everything works fine. Should I, as a seller, care about anything else, like uh, getting more affiliates? Or that's it. I need to relax and wait for all the traffic to flow and get some percentage <laughs> of that commission uh, to me. So uh, I think it would be a better idea. And uh, as a seller, I need to constantly do something to make sure that affiliates are happy promoting the products. What would be uh, your like, advice or experience from successful sellers? Yes, thank you. This is a great question. Um, and something I dig into a lot when I'm kind of vetting someone's business, if it's ready for affiliates, is asking, who's doing your affiliate management? Because that's kind of what you're describing is like, who is recruiting affiliates and who is managing affiliates? And what does that process and team or person look like in your company? That's where they might go, oh, I thought ClickBank was going to do all that. Like I described before, we're a great platform and network for affiliates to find you. We'll take a lot of uh, burden off of your affiliate management team and like all that friction reduction. But the top level companies and the people that add, you know, seven plus, eight plus figures to their business with affiliates have an affiliate management team. Then this is regardless of network, right? We're talking just a solid affiliate program for your business in general, regardless if you're on ClickBank or self-hosted or another network. Um, and that affiliate management person is a key role in that. And it's often mishired for. People think affiliate management and they try to fill it with like a VA, like a virtual assistant type person or someone who's very reactive and just waiting for affiliates to ask them for stuff versus proactive. And what this role really needs to be is a B2B sales role. And what I mean by that is business, business sales role, just like we have a ClickBank, right? That's what the role I was in before this uh, director partnerships role. It's going out and headhunting and being rapport building and chatting with other businesses to win business from them and for them. Because when you're look, chatting with other businesses, which affiliates are, they're another business, there's very long lead times, right? It can take a while to close a deal. It's very rapport and personal based. It's very front facing based. And this is really a high level sales role that you're trying to fill for, which means uh, usually uh, salaries need to be competitive and they are also commission based. They probably should have bonuses, structures where they're excited to 
you know, earn more uh, business from affiliates, more sales from affiliates. They should have KPIs that are clear that they can hit and exceed and excel and get additional bonuses or commission. And they should be very hungry for that. The more administrative tasks they're doing, the less selling they're doing to affiliates to win more traffic from them. And so when you're fleshing out this, uh, I would highly recommend if people are new to this, um, looking at what Amber Spears does with East Fifth Avenue. She has an amazing affiliate management training program. She's great at placing affiliate managers and kind of like a uh, recruiting. Um, she kind of has a very good Rolodex of um, people over there. So Alona Rudinsky and Amber Spears at East Fifth Avenue are my favorite resource for kind of affiliate management uh, trainings and hiring and anything around that piece. If that's fleshed out, and you've kind of got a good person in that role, it's, or that might be you as a solopreneur. Sometimes the CEO or the solopreneur likes to take on that role and be that people person, but then you need to backfill other roles, right? Like copy and tech and dev and all that kind of pieces. Um, if that's solved for, then it's like, what are you doing with them? Where are they going? And that's where live events are super important. Like we're just talking before we got live, like about traffic and conversion, affiliate summits, affiliate worlds, ClickBank Platinum Summit, ClickBank Diamond Summit, right? Where are the, where are the affiliates hanging, hanging out? Mimosa Mastermind, Flight Club Mastermind, there's all these great events you can be sending your affiliate manager to, or you yourself can go to to level up your business, but also meet great affiliate partners. And then what are they doing when they're meeting people? How are they following up? How are they closing? How are they winning traffic from people? And that's where that very clear affiliate program is important so that they can speak to that confidently and actually know that, hey, we convert X, Y, Z. We convert at this percentage to this demographic um, with this type of traffic sources. Here's the email swipe files. Here's the best banner ad images. Here's all the best things we have for you. What else do you need? Right? They're kind of going above and beyond for their affiliate partners to win the traffic for you. And that's kind of starting to flush out that whole affiliate program on the back end. And what does that back end look like with that affiliate management team? Very good. And say uh, I totally agree with you because when some brokers are strong affiliate, those affiliates, they also have like a business, they have teams and yep. they're going to go <laughs> out and spend thousands or tens of thousands of dollars to promote your offer. And yeah. expect everything to be in place working because they do it to earn money, not just because uh, they're having, well, they're having fun, but uh, first and foremost, they do it to earn money and to get that ROI in place. Good. Uh, well, then I'll, I'll say too, the, um, a big traffic source for affiliates is email, right? Like uh, people with email lists that they're monetizing and promoting affiliate offers to. And you might think that there's not much overhead or ROI there, oh, right? There's tons of overhead. But the, but the issue is that too, it's the opportunity cost. If they, if they know they can promote this offer, it's going to pay them an average $5,000 per mail and they don't know what yours is going to pay them, that's a risk they're taking on because they could have made five grand that day instead of nothing <laughs> or two grand. So if they only make two grand compared to the five grand they could have made to their list, they've just lost $3,000 their, in their mind, right? So those are the objections you're trying to overcome to earn tests, to earn traffic from people. That's where a good affiliate manager will be asking those questions. Like, what do you typically make per send? What do you typically make per promotion, right? And then they're tracking that as if traffic comes in and they know, oh, this is above or below or right on par where we need to be. And they're following up and not making assumptions going, hey, how's this going for you, right? Do you need anything else from us? Where's the issue? Because there might be an issue with the email subject line you gave them or the swipe file you gave them. And it's kind of working through all of that with these affiliate partners to keep earning that traffic. Because uh, when you mentioned the emails, there are so many emails you can send per month, not even per day. It's per, like per month because otherwise we just burn your database to the ground. And it's done. <laughs> so each email blast is uh, it's important. You just don't do it with uh, random stuff because uh, that's a risk. Not only of not earning or losing that per grant, but it's actually burning through the database. To say, hey, right. what I, I have never expected to re receive that. So just go, uh, unsubscribe, that, uh, <laughs> you lose, and that's, that's bad. Uh, good. So we are slowly going to that of my question about the uh, sellers part, because that's uh, exciting, but something new for me, so I'm exploring. And then it will be affiliate part, which I'm working with affiliates. I know a bit better. So, but uh, you mentioned, and that's very clear uh, from all the uh, like insights you're sharing that the seller actually does the heavy lifting. And mm -hmm. uh, ClickBank takes uh, the uh, job of uh, taking care of the boring stuff. So for a lot of people, 
maybe it sounds like boring stuff is actually maybe boring, but it's still saving money, not sharing commission with Street Bank. But what mm -hmm. is it to that revenues? So, can you please explain it? And since I'm also uh, very excited to see it. Uh, for those people who launch in the affiliate programs, why it actually beneficial, especially when you start to go with uh, the partner like ClickBank to take care of the boring stuff because it's not only boring stuff, it's probably one of the essential stuff for the success, but yes. people may not see it immediately and think, hey, we can just, I mean, get the right track, launch the program and do everything good with affiliates. I wish it was so, but I do know that it's way, way, way harder than that. So can you please uh, share a bit more about that boring stuff you do? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, because uh, you know, ClickBank's pricing structure, right? We, play, we uh, take 7.5% plus a dollar per transaction. And people often clutch their purses when they hear that. And they go, oh my gosh, but my processing is only $2.9.30. And it's probably higher than that on average because you're probably paying credit card fees and so you're probably around three and a half to four percent blended, depending on what your merchant processing is. They're going, why would I pay ClickBank double what my merchant processing is, right? <laughs> and like you're describing, it's like, well, if you want to do, if you want to build what ClickBank does at scale, and that's the important part at scale, we're doing a tremendous amount um, of friction reduction of your growth. Because if you want to go get your own merchant processing and kind of do all that, you usually have to pay an escrow. You have to wait. You have, you'll have caps that you can only, you know. Uh, take X dollars a month on your credit uh, to collect from credit cards and things like that. On ClickBank, if you're approved to sell, you can have a $3 million day the next day and that's not going to break anything, right? Like um, you can scale to the moon as we call it without worrying about hitting merchant processing caps. You'd be surprised at how much business I win actually on processing despite our higher fee because of that no cap aspect. People can just get going, get selling once they're approved to sell on ClickBank and roll with it. The other big pieces are who on your team is paying affiliates? Who's actually paying them? How fast are they paying them? Who's doing 1099 contracts every, because if an affiliate makes more than $600 US um, a year, you owe them a 1099 contract. You have to just collect a W9 form from them. Who's doing that on your team, right? Who's doing local and state tax remittance? if at all, <laughs> which you should be <laughs> if you're not. And all these like really boring things that sound just like tedious, ClickBank's just doing all that that you don't have to worry about. And the, other, and the other aspect of all those items are is how well does that scale if you grow to 10, 100, 1,000 affiliates? And that's where things start to break down on self-hosted affiliate programs is they might work fine for a handful of affiliates that you're working with on a really close basis. If you start to scale past that, it starts to become a big friction um, and a lot of overhead for your business. And a key part of that, of that how fast you pay affiliates is critical there. Because most self-hosted affiliate programs I see probably pay affiliates like a net 30, where it's like if I drive sales today on October, what is it, 13th? I like it'll take that month to settle. So it'll settle like say on November 1st, and that's going to take me to till December 1st, and that 30 basis actually get paid for a sale I made today. And that, that spends on how people do it, but that's like an average net 30 payment term for affiliates uh, on self-hosted programs. ClickBank, on the other hand, since we're collecting all this cash through the day and kind of paying affiliates, we can pay affiliates on a net seven basis for any general affiliate. So if a sale happens today on a Thursday, that'll settle uh, Tuesday night um, and then it'll pay out the next Wednesday. So within like 10 days, if I got made a sale today, they'll get paid that cash for that commission, which is super important if you're working with media buyers, because the faster the cash comes in, the more they can spend on ads and the faster they can spend on ads and start to scale. And then if they're a platinum affiliate, we pay them twice a week. So we can pay them on a net three, net four basis twice a week. So they're getting their cash flow sped up quite dramatically compared to what most people could pay on a self-hosted affiliate program. And that part is, you can't really sleep on that. Like that's huge You pay affiliates quickly and accurately is big. If you miss an affiliate payment, it's one of the easiest ways to ruin that relationship and the trust with that affiliate if you're missing payments. And that's what I see happen with self-hosted programs. Someone forgets to hit click send in PayPal. They forget to send the checkout or the wire or the deposit out, or they can't pay affiliates certain ways. And so it, relying on a network to do that can just help add a lot of trust. There's affiliates out there that only promote on a few different networks because they don't want to go chase 
a thousand different affiliate payment programs on self-hosted things. They'll promote on like MaxWeb and ClickBank and that's it because they know MaxWeb and ClickBank will pay them <laughs> on time every time. And so they, you have that trust built in if you're part of a network. And sorry, I don't mean, I don't mean to just pitch ClickBank here. I'm just kind of showing like the real overhead of running an affiliate program at scale is reality. Some companies can handle it and can scale with it just fine. That's cool. Um, but for a lot of people, just if they're like, I need to add this revenue channel in, they don't have all that systems built out. And if things start to scale quickly, that's where relationships can be burned with affiliates if you don't have that shirt up. Yeah, and uh, the speed of uh, cash deployment, as you mentioned, for media buys is uh, critical mm -hmm. because uh, the, they have to pay those uh, Facebook or Google invoices and not many of them have that 30-day uh, credit from Google. Actually, a lot of them have, but not everybody. So the sooner they get the money, the sooner the money gets back to paying for ads. And uh, yeah, I mean, even two times a month is good for a product hosted program, very good. And I mean, two times a month, it's not, it's actually like net 15, but it's yep. again, uh, two times longer than what you do for regular affiliates. That's uh, uh, net seven. And now yeah. uh, you just mentioned one word and uh, which always put me in a bit of dread is that you mentioned PayPal and I countless stores of PayPal <laughs> just freezing the accounts with your money. Yeah, it. yeah. They... You need to pay the affiliates in the actual Toronto business, but they'll, hey, we uh, locked your money up until we do verification. So please wait, and you we do whatever they want to do because they keep your money. They keep your money hostage. You don't want to run into that situation because that's how you start losing the, all those affiliates, and then explaining them about PayPal. They don't care. They have uh, bills to pay to Google or Facebook. No, I've heard so many horror stories of that exact thing where like affiliate traffic spiked. They were maybe on Stripe and paying through PayPal and either one of those two things locked them up because traffic surged mm -hmm. and PayPal or Stripe went, whoa, what's happening here? Yeah. <laughs> and then they locked the money up and then they couldn't pay affiliates now. And affiliates are always upset because they're expecting payments to come through and commission to come through. And then that can, that can really fold the business pretty quickly. So not thinking about the scalability of the tech you've got is very important and reliability i mean i don't want to point fingers uh any directions but i mean when it comes to actually uh getting the money you earned to your bank account from your yeah. payment processor uh especially with all the products that have been sold through affiliates it's uh especially when you're scaling and like you mentioned the threshold can go up immediately like it can spike some of it spikes, triggers all the alerts any payment processor has. And when yeah. they run into uh, alerts, first thing they do, they block everything, like shut <laughs> down, and then take time to figure out what's going on. I remember right. the months when our uh, payment processor blocked our payments three times in uh, two weeks. Just collecting payments through credit card, they just blocked it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, not Which they that blocked, kills your business, uh, yeah. Yeah, we were not able to use, uh, I mean, we would unblock it, then they block it again, and until we actually uh, figured it out, and we built a ton of uh, extra rules using their tools inside the system, so now they don't block us, we block our customers. When uh, mm -hmm. so, some, somebody like made a mistake with the credit card, then just pay, 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 like three consecutive transactions, now we block them. Not to a pain processor blocks us yep. and everybody. But that was, I mean, a, a huge surprise for me. So uh, why are we talking a lot about that? Because uh, marketing may be exciting, but uh, those are the boring things, the payment processing and the outcome of successful payment processing that actually is the lifeblood of the business because it moves the money. And if you don't have it in place, then you might run into issues scaling. So. Uh, Thomas, thank you very much for uh, all of those insights. I think maybe it will help somebody do the right choice uh, uh, when launching their campaign. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, it's like when I started out in the space like seven years ago, I've been in our marketing for 10 years. I used to focus so much on the copy and the marketing and like the angles and the hooks. And I still geek out on that stuff. But the last 
four or five years, three, three to four years, I'd say I've really sunk into like the operational sides of a business. Cause what I've seen is like, you can copy someone's funnel, right? You can like funnel hack something and kind of get a good enough offer up and running and they don't get scale. And I'm like, why don't those succeed when others do? And it's because they don't have the operational backend pieces tied up, not just like the tech, right? But the actual teams and people and ways to test and improve and win traffic and how people are testing like that part of your business sounds like the boring stuff, but it's what builds scale and builds stability. And that's the foundation, I would say. Mm -hmm. Good. So now taking off my uh, sales head, like you mentioned them and uh, getting one that I'm more familiar with, the affiliate, uh, the actual yeah. uh, media buyer who, I mean, maybe owns the list, maybe uh, does amazing paid ads, maybe just uh, really uh, good at uh, creating content. So he's an influencer. Uh, so I'm an affiliate with QuickBank. I already know that you rank up all the offers. Yeah, so probably the one that is on top is the best to try to send to. But then also being a digital marketer and having some media buying experience, I do understand that if everybody promoting the top stuff, sure. the competition <laughs> goes up. Uh, the bids go up, uh, the traffic costs, and I need to uh, compete against all those thousands of other smart guys promoting the same offer. I probably don't <laughs> want to do that. Uh, I want to compete as little as possible and to get the audience that is not attacked from all the possible angles created by very creative people just to get them to that particular product. So do I do? How do I, for me, uh, as an affiliate, pick up the offer that I don't need to compete with all your really super cool uh, double comma affiliates, platinum club stuff, guys? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question. The, um, I, so I always start with these questions like, well, it's like, well, what's your traffic source, first of all? Because you might find that, yes, this is a high competitive offer and all that kind of stuff, but your traffic source might be a more niche traffic source that it isn't blown up on. So you might just be fine to promote there and kind of not have to deal with the insane ad costs and things like that for a top scaling offer. Um, especially if you're like an email or a social or organic affiliate, right? You might actually do pretty well with a top offer because there's already buzz about it. You might be, be able to pick up things that because there's already buzz about it, you can kind of convert on the warmer traffic to that offer, if you will. So I wouldn't hesitate to test top offers if they match your niche and match your traffic source. Um, if you, but I do think there's credit to what you're saying, right? Where, okay, I want to find a good enough offer that's still really good. People always focus on the top page of the marketplace. But gosh, if you're just like looking at the general marketplace without going to different niches, you can get all the way down to like page eight or nine, and there's still very good offers in there. They might be older. They might not have, uh, they might not have the traction they once had. They might be newer and upcoming. And if you get on a newer and upcoming offer before it's scaling, it's a great way to kind of get the best conversions on that because not everyone's jumped on it yet, but it's still a very good fresh hook and everything. And usually those offer owners are willing to pay a bit more because they're still trying to win traffic. So you can usually kind of get some better assistance because they might not be inundated with a thousand affiliates that might have a, you know, a handful they're trying to scale with. You can be one of those handful. So you can actually get some better customer support, if you will, from the fleet management team over there. And so um, looking at the page, you know, three through eight, if you will, the marketplace is a good way to find, I call them the sleepers, right? Um, but it's, it's a little discredited to them because those offers are still probably multiple platinum or diamond level, like revenue wise, they're still very good offers. There's not page one offers right now. That's not a bad thing. The other thing I'd recommend is if you Google ClickBank top offers, you'll find a blog post we put out every month and it's evergreen. So if you scroll all the way down, you'll see like posts from last year and the year before where we're featuring top offers. Um, not just the marketplace, we kind of pulled slightly different metric. That's a little more recent what the marketplace looks at. And so that can feature some offers you might not have seen, especially if you scroll down, you'll see some ones that might have used to be top offers, but have now maybe quieted down a bit that you can jump on. And there's some links on that page that go to like top trending offers we put out, different niches we put out. So you can use that to kind of get a little more granular. And something we haven't talked about yet is um, ClickBank and other networks, right? We have our account management teams internally here who are managing platinum affiliates and platinum sellers. So if you generate more than $250,000 on ClickBank, you become a platinum whatever, if you're an affiliate or a seller. 
and you get assigned a dedicated representative here at ClickBank who is going to learn about your traffic, learn about your like what you're trying to do, learn what other offers work well for you on or off ClickBank and help you match into new offers that are coming on you might not have heard of yet because we've got all the inside scoops of who's launching what. And also just so, oh, have you tried this offer yet? Have you tried that offer yet? This matches your demographic. This matches, this one's really similar, but a different hook, right? So they can help to kind of craft and kind of get fed uh, ideal offers for you to test. And so that's a really good way to kind of tap into the, not the secret sauce, if you will, just that relationship level that you can have with a network like that. Okay, and uh, since I'm the host now for all the amazing guests we have, I can tell you that uh, there is a party already uh, when you're an affiliate and that party has two uh, foundation uh, blocks or stones. First, do your uh, homework or research. And here, we, uh, Thomas, just sharing all those links with me right now. We'll try to do the other way around and I'll put it into the chat. Yeah. And it oh, should be shared to all our channels, I hope, if it works right. Um, so now you have all those links uh, in the comments. And yeah, looks like it's working. Good. Um, so show, yeah. So I now, uh, now can show the questions from myself as a post. Good. Uh, and uh, that's the first one. Do your research, do your homework. And the second one is ask uh, the team, ask the account manager, ask the questions. Don't be afraid to ask because then you actually talk to people who have the exposure to data, they will not tell you what to do, but they can share some insights to help yes. you make the decisions that will work for you. And that's what a lot of uh, uh, affiliates, especially those who are starting, I know that from like talking to a lot of people, they uh, miss the point. They will uh, spend, uh, and I don't want to offend anybody, but they will spend tons of money to uh, for education, for all the courses, materials, they learn the systems in and out. They will never ask the account manager of the network. And they don't yeah, no, it's... Because... Yep. Just, I'll, I'll do a note on that too. The, there's a, a bad question to a network, right? Is like, hey, what's working? Because <laughs> that's super broad in general. It's like, well, yep. a lot's working, right? Like you want to get, the more specific you get with your questions, the better d data you'll get back from a network. So if you can ask or give them data too, it's like, hey, I need offers that pay at least, let's say $100 that convert at least this percentage, you maybe take the conversion rate out because that's all arbitrary depending on traffic source, but right, I need offers that pay at least this much um, and are in this vertical and target this demographic of people. Like, what do you have? That helps an account manager here, an affiliate manager here go, oh, here's what we've got right? And kind of like silo and pick things for you a bit better. Or if you've got something that's working on maybe another network or a self-hosted offer, you can go, hey, this is what's um, really worked for me in the past. Here's a few offers I've done well with. Um, what do you have like this? And that's a very easy way for us to go, oh, here's a you know six more you should try kind of thing that are like that. So the more you can give us, the better we can give you in turn. And then you get track track and put all those offers in rotation exactly. <laughs> and let the auto yes. optimization do the job. But on a serious note, even if you don't have all those uh, KPIs in place or products, you can just come, you know what? I'm actually good at buying Google search traffic in this niche. Or I'm yep. good with uh, Facebook ads in uh, UK. Yes. What yep. should I promote? Yeah, that and helps then, tremendously. Yeah. yeah. Because then uh, <laughs> yeah. the account management team actually knows what works good for Facebook in UK or what was, works good for Google search. And they will give you more than one example. And that would be the best way to start and then expand just adding more and more stuff to the mix slowly than even new uh, niches or new channels and expanding your operations. Good. I, well, I'm so glad we actually uh, start to know it, guys, because that's very insightful. I, I say we already can see like five or six small videos where we just cut one of your answers. And uh, it's like a well of knowledge. Thank you very much, Thomas, for that. I have a question oh, yeah. uh, from uh, the audience uh, before the call, because I do know that a lot of our uh, viewers will be watching this in the recording. So, uh, for all those live streams, I mean, they're live streams, but they will also be uh, shared as a sure, recording later yeah. on. Uh, we have those questions. And for everybody watching us in recording, 
Don't hesitate to ask the questions before the stream next time, so they will go into the list. But before I do that, or maybe while I'm doing that, we also have uh, people watching us live now. We've been through, uh, wow, 40 minutes talking. Time just <laughs> flies by. I mean, it, I thought it was just maybe like 20, 25 minutes. I thought I need to talk more. But we, I don't. We are done good, 40 minutes talking. So I have questions here. While I'll read the questions, Thomas will go through the questions. Should you have any additional questions, just feel free to type it in. We'll show them on screen and uh, we'll answer those questions. But while that is going on, um, those are the questions. So uh, the one, I mean, I probably could type it, but I'll try to use my best English to read it out uh, consistently. So. If someone buys through an affiliate link, how does the affiliate or website like ClickBank make sure that product seller actually counts it and pays the commission? Yeah, great question. Yeah, and so that's another reason why affiliates like a network because I know the network isn't like skimming affiliate, you know, they call it skimming or like kind of taking some off the top, like not attributing some sales, things like that. Um, so the way ClickBank works is that you have your affiliate account that you sign up and kind of create. And any account can operate either way, but you've got your ClickBank account and there's a seller account. And when you build a tracking link between the two, you're matching, I'm this affiliate, I'm promoting the seller and here's the link. And there might be, like you said, that might be going through RedTrack with additional tracking sequences, might be going through like a short link shortener or something, that's totally fine. Um, when that, when someone clicks on that link, that redirects through our servers so that we can I'm going to say cookie, but I want people to understand that when I say cookie, it's not, we're not just relying on cookies because cookies are volatile, right? They don't work across device. They don't work across things. We've got some proprietary stuff. I can't hundred percent share my public channel. Um, but we go through our server. We cookie that person that goes through the cookie lasts for 60 days. So if that customer buys now or in 59 days, um, that commission will be applied to, your account in real time. So what you're seeing is, we call it a hop, like you're kind of hopping through a link. So you see a hop happen in your ClickBank dashboard analytics. That's someone clicking on that tracking link. You see um, order form impressions. That's how many people have clicked through on that seller's landing page to the order form. You see the uh, sales that have happened on that. You see the commission that equals. You see if they took any upsells and what that commission would be from any of the upsells that customer took. You see if there's any refunds that have come out. If you're getting, if you're on a rev share, if you're on a CPA, uh, you're just getting the fixed dollar amount on the initial sale and no refunds happen on that. If you're getting rev share, you might have some refunds that kind of debit against that. I um, mean, any chargebacks. And so you're kind of seeing all that data in real time for whatever time window you want to look at. And then um, that's getting settled on that weekly basis I was talking about or twice weekly for platinum into the paychecks reporting. And you're seeing all that go out. This is all super transparent. You can see everything that's coming through. I'll say this, like there's, no affiliate platform's perfect, right? Like cookies can get dropped by, you know, again, I'm saying cookie. We don't only it's rely on cookies. Cookie, we do yeah. a lot of things, yeah. Um, but tracking can get lost. Like no one's perfect. Um, you know, there's just things that you no network can account for in this day and age. So there can be some loss in anything. What you want to make sure is that the network you're working with is a trusted network that's been around for a while. ClickBank's been around for almost 25 years now. We've paid out over $5 billion in commission. We, you know, we have a quote that we pay on time every time. We have a lot of trust in the space for paying accurately and paying on time. That's kind of what we've built a brand around. And whatever you're looking at, you just want to make sure that if it's a third-party tool a seller is using to track, you want to do some research on that tool, maybe make sure that there's not reports of things skimming or being lost unnecessarily um, or maliciously. I don't want to point fingers, but that can happen on different networks and things like that. Um, but that's, that's the gist of it, right? Like it's, we're cooking for 60 days. When the sale happens, it's last cookie wins. So if you're the last click for that customer, you'll get the sale um, and the commission tied to that. Sellers cannot override commission. They cannot like take it back. The only way you would lose commission would be if it's on rev share and a customer refunded. And then that would get debited out of your account. Um, yeah, but there, there's no way to like change commission um, that's kind of locked in at the point of sale. So if there's recurring tied to it, sellers can't like change what that recurring model would be and then like kind of cut you out of it. You're kind of locked in based on ClickBank's rules around those products and the commission levels that the seller has set at that point in time. 
and that's another benefit actually working with my network because network sets the rules for the game and uh, network is uh, highly motivated I click back to maintain those rules and yes. make sure they work both ways but as for the tracking part I mean us being a tracker uh, when you say cookie, I do know that it's not a cookie. And, I know, I need uh, a better word for it, but yeah, it's like, it's, it's yeah. Food. Like, I, yeah. I personally, I hate for a digital fingerprint because it's like somebody uh, tracking you, but uh, being a tracker, we track a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the good part about what ClickBank does is that actually whenever traffic is coming from uh, directly, uh, shortiness, uh, red track, uh, et cetera, it ends up in the ClickBank hoplink, always. Mm -hmm. And that's when it goes to your service, and that's when the big part of the magic that you call cookie actually happens. Yes. And uh, knowing how things work, I can tell you from tracking experience that indeed uh, nobody, because of technology, can guarantee 100% accuracy. However, uh, with uh, the things done right, and uh, since we have our two tech teams talking, which uh, we know how we operate and uh, collaborate, uh, ClickBank does amazing job of collecting and preserving all the information they need uh, for accurate results attribution and basically tracking. Although yep. supposed by that trackers, but uh, the network should be the best tracker of all the other trackers because in then they are responsible for the money, not only exactly. finally. <laughs> so yeah, I'd say it does not behoove us to try to skim commission off of an affiliate spread. The amount of money we'd make from that would be pale in comparison to the reputation damage we would have if we did that. So it's like we make our money when you make money and that's what we build ourselves around and that's why we we can operate on a very relationship driven business and really help people build their businesses because then we make more money. So it's very win, win, win. Good. So, um, well, uh, there is a question. I will probably have answered the question. Uh, how to pick a perfect affiliate offer on ClickBank? So, yeah. guys, we actually talked about this for a good uh, 10 or more minutes. I hope uh, you'll be able to uh, like win, win back to the recording. I just, I just put the top offers link in there again. I would I'd point people to that top offers page. We link to the YouTube channel from there where we feature a top offer once a month and some other shorts we're starting to do now on our TikTok and our Instagram and YouTube. Um, we, we're trying to get much better at highlighting the right offer for the right affiliate. And that's what our affiliate management team is great at if you're a platinum affiliate. Um, but if you're not, you know, the marketplace and these top offer features we do and the trending offer features linked to from there are great places to start. And I cannot, uh, but I have to get this comment live. Hey, guys, uh, pleasure to hear from you. Uh, uh, guys is the guy who took me first to one of the ClickBank uh, closed events where I met the oh, team nice. for the first time. We had that story where I, I said, like, my roommate, when we went to the event, said that we are in a bad neighborhood in New York. He said, well, what's <laughs> the here? He says, you know what? There is a text that reads Hell's Kitchen. Yep. <laughs> and, and what you say well it's uh, not the best one well i have not noticed oh, that funny um, no no love gus yeah we, we he was just down at our platinum summit in costa rica this summer and we got to hang out there again so i've known gus for years now so thanks for ch chiming in gus miss you man yep okay so uh we have more uh i think more people came just to say hi here than to listen to content because <laughs> we know the stuff already uh but i have one more question on my list uh, which uh, I do like, uh, and I, I don't have a good answer, but uh, Thomas, you might have a good one. So how should <laughs> a landing page to a ClickBank product look like? Yeah, so that's, that's hard to answer over this kind of medium, right? Um, so I'll just couch that, like without knowing what offer you're promoting. I would say... The offer, so the land, so the, we're kind of talking the bridge page, right? Yeah, like, so I've got page. a Facebook ad, someone's clicking on that to, a, I'm an affiliate, a page I'm hosting to kind of warm up the traffic. And then there's a link there going to the seller's page. And so that's kind of what we're descri describing here. Yeah, because so, Facebook would not allow redirects. So you need to have something yeah. like a bridge page. We call it landing page yeah. before we send people to Hoplink. Yeah, and bridge and, and too, like even despite the technology, like bridge pages are good to just warm up traffic because people, when they're just scrolling through social for whatever reason, they're not usually in a buying behavior. And so that 
bridge page can be a great way to kind of get them to that buying mindset and to help warm up and target and disqualify the wrong traffic too. to kind of get the right traffic to the landing page. So that converts better. Um, and there's other things you might do on that bridge page, but what it should look like, gosh, um, the ones I see that at scale are largely pretty simple, right? It might be a very simple quiz lander. It might be a very simple kind of like, um, blog style, kind of like native ad page kind of thing. But because what you're trying to do is just get people to click on that, uh, your redirect link to the seller page from that page. So you don't want to make it overly designed and overly pretty. You want people to land on it and trust it, but any page builder now can make a good looking landing page. And what you typically want to do is look at the offer page you're promoting and be inspired by it. You don't want it to look the exact same because that's not really going to warm it up. It just will be get confused if you go from like a very similar offer page to an offer page, but you want to be inspired by what are the big ideas that that offer is highlighting, right? What's kind of like the big thing there and how can you draw intrigue from that? Now we're getting a little bit into copywriting, um, but then what are you doing on that landing page to maybe mimic the colors of that page a bit? So it looks a bit more native, like you're jumping from one to the other. Maybe you want to look more of like a new site though. Um, but then what are the headlines you're using? What's that sub, uh, sub headline you're using? Is there a video element? What questions on a quiz would you ask to kind of warm up people for that offer you're sending to? So I'd say what it looks like depends on the offer you're promoting. I'd say try to match it a bit with color scheme maybe, um, but then keep it very simple and hyper clear on what that customer should do. They should be clicking on one button, whether it's a quiz kind of thing or one like learn more button to get to the offer. The text on that page and the headline and the images are what you'll test a ton to figure out what is driving those clicks through more. So sorry, that can't get super clear without seeing what you're promoting and kind of how you're doing it. But in the general sense, that's how I would start is look at the offer you're promoting, be inspired by, and then um, hyper test the headline, sub headline, and then whatever main element is your mechanism for getting that click. Um, and I can add to that. Uh, yeah. so I happen to see, um, I tend to save in thousands of different landing pages. Yeah. Um, uh, what I never uh, saw or uh, that uh, design is important. Of course, all those pages are nicely done, they clean, but they focus on content. Design elements start to make sure it's somehow connected to the product, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. like colors, etc. Nice, but uh, and uh, the pages can be anything from the editorials, all those like uh, mass media to videos to quizzes to everything. Most successful pages focus on good content versus good design. So probably yes. uh, when you study, think about uh, what people will read and uh, uh, assume from reading that than what people will see. That is less important. I mean, it's, it shouldn't be uh, like not working or messy. It should be nice, <laughs> neat, and clean, but you don't need to pay like premium design. No, it can't erode. Yeah, it can't erode trust, right? And you need to kind of like, oh yeah, this is where this is where I expected to click based on the ad I clicked on or the post I clicked on. Like, it shouldn't be a shock what they land on, um, but it doesn't need like you're saying. It doesn't have to be this like hyper pretty, super overly designed page. It can be very simple. If you look at most of the top blogs in the world, they're very simple blogs, right? They're just delivering the medium, which is a text, in a very clear way. So you just need to deliver the medium of your copy and whatever else you're using for the mechanism to get the click or the contact, like you said, and then feature that prominently um, and clearly for the consumer to engage with. Good. So that was my last question. I see everybody just saying hello uh, and uh, not asking questions. Um, that's good. I mean, uh, <laughs> I uh, enjoy to uh, listen to Thomas too a lot. Uh, I can say that I learned a couple of new things myself. And I'll have one question I'll follow up about the uh, like training for affiliates because that's important. That's something we like uh, as a software solution need to start doing some to actually launch a proper affiliate program for ourselves because. Uh, we, we are using our own tools. We can build our own in-house offer using our own in-house tool. We done that technology part, but it was nothing without the actual content and hours of somebody to put to actually build that program. So that's uh, where it turns to 
what why we're not doing this right because we just don't have a person to take responsibility mm -hmm. for building and launching that program is it's hard so yeah. Yeah. thank you very much um uh so to other audience who just live uh that's probably your pre-last chance to ask some uh question live because we're talking for a good hour or close to an hour already and we're about to reach a time cap so maybe there's good that we don't have that many questions um uh, honestly i thought i'll have more but uh, uh my list here no, those uh, are great yeah <laughs> yeah it's a long list but uh, you covered all of that so it's just two questions to ask him then because uh, you did a great job just oh yeah <laughs> going through what's happening for the sellers for the affiliates and just explaining to everybody uh how the network operates because uh you can rarely uh get that inside even uh on those trade show events everybody talks about offers yeah nobody talks about how quick bank operates and for me it's uh that operational part of business is actually very exciting because uh, uh, I'm saying how uh, other systems operate is uh, not only interesting but useful to improving uh, your own systems. So thank you very much yeah. for that. Oh, of course, yeah. No, I, no I, I hardly ever try to talk too much about ClickBank because I don't want to come across as like trying to pitch it or something. But like the the tech is good and it does help a lot of people, so that makes it fun to talk about in that way. What I love about this space, though, is that it's so relationship driven and that it's like the people are so helpful. Like you might think that someone's a direct competitor to you and you might find that they could actually be your biggest affiliate um, and they can work together very well. So I love going to the events. You know, I'll be in Miami for Mimosa Mastermind that Amber Spears hosts here in November. Um, and like, you know, I've been on the road for I visited our clients in Romania. I was in San Diego a few weeks ago. Right. It's like the people in the space are what drive it. And if you can lean into the people and ask for help when needed and give help and without ask, expecting things in return, you can go a tremendous way in this space pretty fast. So I just urge anyone to, you know, affiliates, the work is hard. It's not as easy as it, you know, might people might think it is. Oh, thanks, Carol. Thanks for hopping on. Um, but it's a, such a fun space to be in. And it's, uh, yeah, there's a reason I've been around ClickBank for seven years. Right. And it's a, uh, yeah, I would say a big benefit that we haven't really hit on is for any network and something you should lean into is what are their account managers and biz dev and salespeople doing? Because, <laughs> uh, right, I've got a rolling Rolodex of these top offers of these people in the space of these other super connectors of these service providers. When I'm chatting with someone at a show, it's very unlikely that they're a perfect fit for ClickBank or what I'm looking for, right? Just because of rule of numbers but there's a very good chance I know that they should talk with somebody that I know, right? So if you can align yourself with super connectors um, in the space, it's a great way to just kind of passively benefit from that if you're on a network that is in turn networking themselves a tremendous amount. So like, right, if I'm out there networking for myself, I'm likely gonna find, oh, have you chatted with Liz Graham? She's a great list manager, she can test your offer, right? Oh, you chatted, have you chatted with Lion Publishing? They've got the best offers right now in the space. You should try promoting that if you're an affiliate, right? So it, it's just kind of like wrap up or a rapport you can just kind of reel off with people at ClickBank and kind of tap into and just that passive, you've got the marketplace, but then there's the overall marketplace and the kind of the network effect of that you get of engaging in these live events with people. So I just say, don't be afraid to get out there if you haven't traveled yet. Um, don't be afraid to lean in to different groups online just to get started and just start networking and you'll go a long way. And that's uh, the best closure for today's amazing media. So guys, I mean, we do this uh, event remotely, uh, live and on uh, the web across Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, whatever other channels have, but uh, do go out, go to all those events and trade shows, meet people live, and if you have a chance, if you don't, there is a web. We can uh, talk to everybody worldwide, but otherwise, uh, find uh, an opportunity to go to live shows and start building all those networking relationships. They help. Thank Thanks. you very much, uh, Thomas. It was great pleasure to have you as a guest on Red Track live stream. And uh, thank you, everybody, who was here today with us across all those mediums. Uh, surprisingly, we made it sharp into one hour as planned. That's a good <laughs> sign. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy the day. Take care. Yeah, thank you, Vlad. Happy scaling, everybody.